Spawnlings, rev those engines. It's time for Motocross Madness. Vroom, 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 vroom. <laughs> The first Motocross Madness came out way back in 1998 and a sequel followed in 2000. Back then the series was praised for its realism with gritty dirt tracks, accurate sounds and cringeworthy crashes. The latest is a more light-hearted approach to dirt bike racing. Yeah, it's really been given a modern twist, hasn't it? Even down to the annoying announcer guy. But the coolest feature beyond a doubt is the avatar riders. There just aren't enough games that make use of those avatars. I love seeing my little Lara Croft zipping about the track. The game sees you tearing through a number of short tracks all set within three sandboxes. The coarse desert sands of Egypt, the glacial marvel of Iceland, and the medieval ruins of coastal Australia. Yes, I'm not sure if the developers have ever been to Australia, but it is nice that they're thinking of us. In fact, there is quite a bit of decent level design in this game. Scattered around are coins and boost bonuses, which often reveal sneaky shortcuts. These are much trickier to navigate than the main track and can lead to disaster, but successfully getting through them will buy you precious seconds. You know, it's a nice balance of risk versus reward. Another way to stay ahead of the pack is through your boost power. By landing tricks and collecting power-ups, you start to fill your boost meter. Chaining tricks together fills the bar up even quicker. If you let the meter fill up completely, you'll enter ultimate flame mode, which gives you a more powerful boost and lets you perform some outrageous tricks. <laughs> If I were to say one criticism, I think it would be that the rubber banding of the AI is a bit too forgiving. And that's where the game tries to keep all the competitors relatively close to you, so you still feel like you're in the race, even if you're not doing so well. But when I had fallen behind the pack, the drivers in front would slow down way too much, or even stop completely. Oh, it ruined the thrill of the chase. Uh, when you finish a race, you're rewarded with cash and XP to level up. Cash is used to buy new outfits, or you can use it to purchase new bikes and upgrades, which you'll need in later races. As you progress, you unlock new skills. I particularly like the ability to boost in midair, but use with caution. I'm flying! Wait, no, I'm falling. Oh, dear. I do like how lenient the track boundaries are. Where you'd normally be restricted by invisible walls, you're free to explore off-road. Oh. Yeah, the game really encourages adventure. In fact, there's an entire mode dedicated to it. In exploration, you're set loose in one of the large sandbox worlds and given the task of collecting skulls and coins. It does have the tendency to get frustrating, though. Reaching some of the collectibles requires a level of precision that just isn't possible with these controls. And the camera just goes crazy when you slip behind scenery. I gave up on this mode pretty quickly. I much preferred Rival, and that's where you have to set the best lap and race against developers' ghost riders. The Trick Sessions mode is about stringing together as many tricks as you can within a time limit to set a high score. These are pretty fun against the AI, but the real challenge is taking on other players online. There's none of that pesky rubber banding, and everyone rides a little harder to cross the finish line. I found it much more competitive and rewarding than the campaign. Mm. You can play this in local co-op on the couch with a friend, but only one other because it only supports two-player co-op. It's a shame there wasn't four-player like Mario Kart because Final I especially... Oh, oh, okay. Uh, I had a pretty good time with this. I'm giving it seven and a half out of ten rubber chickens. Me too. I'm giving it eight. Now it's time to meet Albert Nassif, one of Australia's best gamers. Don't interrupt me, Darren, when I'm talking, when I'm pontificating. 